Star Wars fans, we just got an incredible reveal about the Night Sister Castle in Ahsoka Episode 6. And man, this stuff is just so damn cool. It shows how crazy Dave Filoni is getting with the Ahsoka show when it comes to the tie-ins to other lore and the setup for the future of the Star Wars franchise. Oh, and by the way, I still absolutely think that Abeloth is in play, even given this new information, but I'll talk about that at the end of this video. Okay, so this comes from a Twitter user named Tommy Wall. And man, this is an absolute incredible find. It comes from episode six with the upside down shot that sort of flips around as Balin and Shin are coming out of that castle. And Tommy basically picked all the glyphs up from that shot, flipped them upside down, and then translated them using glyphs from the Jedi Survivor game. So according to Tommy Wall, these glyphs translate from the yur Kitad or the old Sith language. And it says here, praise Kujit, ruler of all. May his reign last for all. And it probably reads all time, but that part is actually cut off. Now, this is referring to a Zepho sage. That's who Kujit is. This is from the Jedi Fallen Order game, and it's also mentioned in the Jedi Survivor game. And the Zepho themselves are an ancient alien race from those games, but they also kind of pop up in the latest season of The Bad Batch. There's an episode where they find this ancient weapon and it looks like a Zepho. So obviously the Zepho are on the mind of Dave Filoni having put them into Bad Batch, but there's also a lot of interesting concept art for Ahsoka that was all done by Matt Alsop. And you can see in this concept art here that the ruins from Ahsoka episode one originally had the Zepho clearly on them. And in some now deleted tweets, Matt Alsop actually did talk about putting the Zepho in to the concept art for Ahsoka. So this find by Tommy Wall seems completely accurate, and this is likely what is going on with that big castle on Peridia. Now, for those that didn't play the Jedi Fallen Order game, you essentially find these different Zepho tombs throughout the galaxy, and you learn some lore about each one of these Zepho sages as you go throughout the game. There was a Zepho sage named Eelrim, who was apparently balanced and really loved nature, and he ended Ended up getting entombed on Kashyyyk, likely because he had such an affinity for the nature that was on that planet. There was a Zepho sage named Mictral, who was very powerful, but demanded sacrifices and tribute from the Zepho people. He ended up getting entombed on the Zepho planet. And then there was Kuji, who was a full-on dark side sage of the Zepho, who ended up creating a tomb on Dathomir. Now, we haven't explained to us in the game that Kujit was very cruel and a horrible leader that just gave completely into the dark side, and he almost destroyed the entire Zepho species. And apparently, after he dies, the Zepho leave our galaxy in search for a new beginning. And so if we take the lore that's established in the Jedi Fallen Order game, and then we look at these old Sith hieroglyphs that are praising Zujit, it seems like there's an obvious connection. Perhaps the Zepho, when they leave our galaxy end up coming to Peridia. But the castle markings are still confusing, considering that the games lead us to believe that the pilgrimage of the Zepho happened after Kujit dies. It's even implied that they're looking for a new beginning and they don't want to go back to the dark ways that happened under the rule of Kujit. So why does it say praise for Kujit, ruler of all, may his reign last all, if they were actually escaping the tragedies of his rule? But the thing is, the glyphs themselves don't actually say praise. They say Rays. Tommy Wall and many other people that were interpreting this just believe that the P must be cut off from this scene, that it likely says praise Kujit, but I think it could actually say Ray's Kujit. And interestingly enough, I've been watching what some Star Wars fans in different places around the world are saying about this reveal. And in spots where they speak languages different than English, a lot of those fans are interpreting the glyphs to mean raise him, to mean that they're wanting to resurrect Kujit. I wonder if there's something going on in the sort of phonetics or the translation there, but it is really interesting because regardless of what actual language you speak, this is a translation of an ancient fantasy made up 
language. That gives it multiple ways to be interpreted. But if the castle and the catacombs there are meant to signal the raising of Kujit and the idea of his reign lasting for all time, it actually tracks with a lot of the Night Sister culture. Because we know that the Night Sisters use dark magic to resurrect things. It's even possible that all the Night Sisters themselves are dead. But even the Night Sisters don't play into this story in a very clear way. There are a lot of questions here. For instance, Morgan says that Peridia is the ancient homeworld of her ancestors. Balin says that he looks around and sees what was once the Great Witch Kingdom of the Death of Miri, and he says that the existence of the Great Mothers prove this. So both of those characters' statements seem to imply that Peridia is the actual homeworld of the ancient Night Sisters, and that that predates the Zepho. It's possible the Zepho come to that planet after Kujit dies and they seek the help of the Night Sisters and perhaps they fall into darkness and decide they want to actually resurrect Kujit. Maybe then some Night Sisters from Peridia take a pilgrimage back into the galaxy to try to retrieve the body from the tomb that is on Dathomir of Kuja. And maybe the Night Sisters just waited on Peridia for that pilgrimage that they first made to return. And maybe it just never did. I also think it's interesting that this kingdom of the witches seems to have fallen into complete ruin. Did that happen because of the Zepho? Did it happen because giving into the dark side more? and more just destroyed them as it usually does every culture or civilization? Are the boxes from the catacombs that the Night Sisters convinced Thrawn to help bring into the known galaxy, are those bodies of old dead Night Sisters or perhaps bodies of old dead Zepho. I do find it interesting that the Zepho sages entombed themselves on different planets in the known galaxy. And if you think about the Egyptian pharaohs, the main reason the pharaohs entombed themselves was because they thought they would be resurrected one day, that they would all be brought back to life by the gods. Did the Zepho always intend to have their great sages be brought back to life? Like I said, there's still a lot of questions here, but a lot of the pieces are beginning to pull together and we're getting our best look yet at what might have actually happened in ancient times with the Zepho, with Peridia, and with the Night Sister. And a lot of people ask me, like, does this make your Abeloth theory not work? Like, is that debunked now? And is it clearly going to be Kujit that is calling out to Balin? And I don't think so. I think Abeloth is still absolutely in play. I get the sense that this castle and the catacombs are maybe one of the only safe places on the planet. I mean, Thrawn doesn't even stay on on Peridia, and he only makes contact with them at the top of that castle. Even the Night Sisters don't seem to go outside of the walls of the castle into the wilderness of Peridia. And when Balin is talking about the things that are calling him, he's looking out at this mountain away from the castle. And he's even more enamored by the thing that's calling him, the thing that stirs there when he's out in the actual wilderness, looking at the statues, looking at the markings of Peridia. And so I still think it's possible that the fairy tale that Balin heard at the Jedi Temple actually has to do with things that even predate the death of Miri Witch Empire. Perhaps Abeloth was imprisoned on this planet, and perhaps that gifted the native species to that planet dark powers, which made the death of Miri Witch Empire. And perhaps the Zepho come here after leaving our known galaxy after the death of Kujit, but are influenced by that same dark presence of Abeloth on this planet. And I can imagine the Night Sisters and the Zepho staying on that planet, but sending out Night Sisters back to the known galaxy to try to retrieve the body of Kujit, bringing him back to the planet of Peridia to resurrect him there and then continue the empire of the dark Zepho. And maybe that just never happened. And that's possibly why the planet in that kingdom just die over time because Abeloth's presence there just rots everything away. I do think it's interesting that these are ancient Sith hieroglyphs that we're talking about about Kujit, and there could be some more explained about what the ancient Sith actually were and how they came 
from the Dark Zepho Empire. I think that would be fascinating because the Sith themselves in legend were actually a race. There was a race known as the Sith. There were like these red skinned people those were the Sith before human beings became Sith Lords. Either way, this is a fascinating reveal for the Ahsoka show and for Star Wars overall. I can't wait to see if we learn more about this in the next two episodes and perhaps in further video games with Cal Kestis. It just seems like this is a ripe new area of lore that we can explore together and I'm super hyped up about it. As I always say, I hope you're having an awesome and a nerdy day and I'll see you in the next video.